in a weary land and he's a shelter in this time of storm. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. That is the God who we serve. No matter how the storms are raging, no matter what hurricanes are coming, hold fast and continue to put your trust in the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we are children. Lord, come before your divine presence one more time, O oh God. Because of your grace and your mercy, Lord, we are here. We thank you, Father, for preserving the lives of your children who are sitting in your presence here today. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought them through the storms, Lord God, that were threatened. My God, regardless, Father God, of this threat, Lord God, and all the things that have happened, Lord, you have kept us. We can say today, it is well with our souls. Hallelujah. Because God, you have kept us. And today we thank you. We pray for all those, oh God, who are not as fortunate, Lord God. We pray for them today that you will deliver them. We pray for them, oh God, that you will send help in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, you are a refuge and strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble. Your people are in trouble, Lord. And we pray today that you'll have mercy. My God, we pray, God Almighty, that they will look up. My God, they will look up. But look at all these desolations, my Father. Look at all the disturbances, Lord. And that they will drive them, Lord, to look up unto you for our redemption, joy at night. Lord, we thank you today and we praise you. We pray, God, that you'll take full force and take over this worship. My God, even now I pray that you'll decrease me to the ground, Lord God. Because I'm nothing in your sight. I am just like a flower that bloom in the morning and in the evening. I wither away, God. But you have all the power and the authority and the audacity, Lord, to keep me strong even now. Speak your word through me to your children, Lord. And cause them to hear, not only to be hearers, but God, they will go away and to be doers of your word, God Almighty, and they will look upon to you from whence come at their help, my God, in these perilous times. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you, Lord, for providing for us in the times of shortage. Thank you, Lord. Mighty God, we praise you and we thank you. All these we ask in no other name, but in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And God's children will all agree and say, Amen and amen and amen. Preparations are made for natural disasters, but scarcely for the return of Jesus Christ. Preparations are made for natural disasters, but scarcely for the return of Jesus Christ. And today we can see all that is going on and all the promises of God. We read it in the Word this morning. All these desolations and natural disasters that we are seeing, they are in the Word of God. So we have to read the Word of God to be edified. We have to read the Word of God to know what we are up to. In these times, there are, we, are, we are in perilous times. We are in perilous times. And the only one that we have to help us is the God of Jeshurun. The God who is our refuge and strength. Amen. So therefore, as Psalm 121 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From where is coming my help? My help or help. Oh, 
how we feel for them. But this is a wake up call. When we look at the flood, water wash all over the place, rising. Women have to be scaling on the backs of other people to get away. Reminds me of the days of Noah. Why do you think all these things are happening? Because God wants his people to look up unto him. Because Jesus Christ can return at any time. With all this that is going on, it draws me closer to God. Every time I see the clouds darkened, it draws me closer to God. Every time I watch the news and see this water rising, this flood, it draws me closer to Almighty God. I'm not going to fear. Because if it takes me down, it is well. <laughs> Absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And what time you want to be present with God, I know. Amen, amen, amen. This is the time, children of God, to turn to God. Let all these things that are going on lead you into the hands of Almighty God. Amen. Why? He is the God that is omniscient. Yes. Meaning that there is nothing that he cannot know, that he doesn't know. He knows it all. Even what is going on now, guess what? God knew all of it before the creation of the world. Yes. That's how awesome he is. Yes. God is omnipresent. It means that there is no place that he does not exist. So all that we are going on right now. God is in the midst. He's just there watching. He is omnipotent. There is nothing he cannot do. He's all together powerful. And the power of nature cannot be compared to the power of almighty God. The power of nature cannot be compared with the power of Almighty God. Let's check out Pharaoh. Call him up and call up Moses. The crossing of the Red Sea. Nature itself was put on hold. God parted the Red Sea to show them his power that is all powerful. One thing with God, he just not just he does not just do things to impress people. He uses his divine and matchless power to magnify his glory and accomplish his perfect will. Like um, some people do some things and they puff up themselves and take all the credit. God don't act like that. Everything that he does is for a reason. To magnify yes. and to glorify yes. his awesome name. Yes. And this is what people need to know more about God. And how, how do we know about God? Uh -huh. We have to read his word. Uh -huh. A lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. If we do not read the word of God, guess what? We are going to live in our little selves. Or little habits and patterns. And over time, it's like our prison. Mm -hmm. The little things are the things that we are accustomed wake up every morning, brush your teeth, go out to work, come back, eat, dinner, watch TV, go to bed. That's habit. <laughs> and if you don't watch it, you can get tied up and chained up in it like a prison. No reading of the word of God. No singing songs of praises. I'm too busy, I gotta go to work. When you come back, Satan put you to bed. Cause you're tired. Have it! It becomes your prison. Satan have you in chain. Your hands behind you. You can't do nothing. Have you on a headlock. Let us wake up 
and look at all that is going on around us and let us draw closer to Almighty God. It can be any time now. Let me just go fast forward. I, I, I don't feel like looking at what I prepare here today. All that is going on now, these are signs of the second coming of God Almighty, of Jesus Christ. Because everything that he says in his second coming, we are seeing it right here now. We are seeing tornadoes creeping in to hurricanes. We are seeing earthquakes. We are seeing fire burning down the whole place. We are seeing wars and wars and wars cannot end. We see famine. We see pestilence in the form of COVID and all types of different false prophecy everything happening at the same time as soon as you get out of one thing something else happen you not even can wake up in the mornings you hear on the news something else is coming all this is just nothing that we should watch but look up We cannot say God didn't warn us. When he told us that, remember I told you so. Everything, they're getting all excited. Remember now, I told you that. That false prophecy is going to come. War is going to come. Everything is in the word of God. We read it and there are more scriptures that ties in with that. As a reminder that Jesus Christ can come. Because the rapture, remember don't leave all the rapture now. We are the church. Yes. So before the great tribulation, you see things happening now. No start yet. It does not start yet. <laughs> the worst is yet to come. Jesus. The rapture will come. It means that there is a swift pulling away <laughs> of God's people who remain faithful to him. It's in the word of God. Yes, it is. Whether you live or you die in Christ, <laughs> you're living and going on under there. Immortality will be throbbing in your vein until Jesus Christ put in his appeal. Listen to 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 13 to 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren. I don't know why God is fast forwarding me. I'm skipping over a lot of things. <laughs> But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. We shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So what does it matter what is going on in the world today? What are we holding on to? That we cannot carry on our backs if we are ready to go up with the rapture with God. And the rapture precedes the second coming of the Lord. And the rapture is for those individuals who have their garments washed in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your hands are clean and your heart is sparkling clean. And then you'll be ready to be escorted up in the clouds with Jesus Christ. I want to be with him. I want to be in the rapture. I want to be in the rapture. I do not want to wait. I'll be left behind for this great tribulation. My Lord, Jesus. Yes. Because guess what? 
The word of God, as we read this morning in Thessalonians, it says that the Holy Spirit will have to step out of the way <laughs> so that the man of sin can come in because God would never allow his church to be exposed to that man of sin. And we cannot function as a body of Christ without the divine Holy Spirit of Almighty God. We cannot That we are in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because. It's enough signs. We have seen it all. Jesus. Christian believers will be transformed. Here Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15. 51. Behold I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Hallelujah. How? In the twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. At the last trumpet. Hallelujah. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will rise incorruptible. And we shall be changed. It doesn't matter how far down I put you. You shall hear the trumpet. It doesn't matter how long you have you. You tell it times could be here. But escorted up. Don't don't be held captive in your patterns and your habits. See God so that when he comes you are ready. Because as I say before the word of God is said and we're going to go to it in Revelation to let us know exactly what the devil in hell is going to be doing after the spirit of God has departed from this world. If the spirit, I, all, I was talking to my brother the other day and I said, if this Holy Spirit of God is here and all these things are going on, this should be enough for us to say, you know what? Let me turn to God. <laughs> Let me turn. Make me a captive Lord and then I shall be free. Force me to render up my soul and I shall Tell him to take you and hold you into his hand and purify you because it's worth it. It will be worth it. What is to come? It will be worth it for us to get purified right now. You see, sometimes you preach, Shanta, and people get offended. You will be happy that they when Jesus Christ said, Thank you, thank you. I'm sorry. at me. You're going to say I am sorry. When Satan ready to reload his sword. Because evil now will take over. <laughs> oh God. The rapture will be an event initiated by Christ Jesus. In which he comes in the clouds and appears to believers. Yes. His revelation will result in drawing, catching, and receiving to himself those believers. During this event, consistent Christians, not today you're hot and tomorrow you're cold, consistent Christians will be transformed. What a beautiful thing to be transformed looking like the high priest. It will be worth it. All that we are going through now, it will be worth it. 
One of the things that captivate me when I was doing this is for the fact that evil will take over this land. People will be in their homes. Those people who are left behind will be in their homes and will be afraid to come out because you don't know what the devil have up to you. And people who are worshiping God. Because a time will come, and I read it in Revelation, when the devil in hell will be sealing people <laughs> who are left behind. So the important thing for us all to do is to be ready. Ready for the rapture of the saints. Remember that God has power. He will never leave us alone. And when I look at uh, Mark 4, 35 to 41, when Jesus was crossing over the Sea of Galilee, and the word of God said, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke, that's the disciples now, awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. No, no, no. This is the same God <laughs> who you're worshiping today. Who can say, peace, be still, if he wanted to do that. He can say, be still. I am God. The crossing of the, the river Jordan. Again. This is just to show you the power of Almighty God. And that there's no, no other power, no other natural disasters, as I mentioned before, is greater than him. He told Joshua to present yourself, prepare the children of Israel, get them all together, get them all together, because you are going to cross over. And remember now, at that time, it was harvest time, and the, the, the river Jordan was overflowing its banks. But God told them, prepare yourself to go over. Because you are going to take possession of that land. Uh, hallelujah. When God says something, he means it. And no one can erase or add to what God says. And Joshua did as God told him to do. You, you see obedience? You see when people are not obedient? It's a serious crime. It's a serious crime when we are not obedient. Joshua obeyed. God said to him, get the priest and tell the priest to put his foot down on the brink of the water. Uh, if there are some people, how am I going to do that? Because the water might going to take me away. If all people I know find all sorts of excuses, how am I going to go there? I get a vision, but it seems as if the devil wants to kill me because he wants me to go into a water that will overflow me. Why should I? But we don't want to do things, that's what we do. Pass it over on the devil. Yes. Sometimes Satan must be saying, Lord have mercy, what did I do now? I didn't do that. <laughs> but because everything that is bad, we put it on the devil. Mm -hmm. And we don't think that God sometimes directs us to the floods. <laughs> and when we get over, like the Red Sea, we glorify him. Yes. <laughs> and we praise him. And we say that there's no other God but you, my God Almighty. Jesus. So Joshua followed the command of God. And the high priest came out and put his feet down on the edge of the water. And lo and behold, this great body of water just rolled up. The word of God said, as a heap in the heart of harvest. Is there anything too hard for me? Says the Lord. Isaiah 43 
three, one to two. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through the fire, it shall not burn you, nor shall the flame scorch you. And these words are true. Check Daniel, and I will tell you about it. That God showed up in the fire with him when he was tossed in there. Because he would not, he would not bow to any false gods. He wouldn't do it. And this is what sometimes when I look and I say the great tribulation that is yet to come. And the things that will face the people in that time. When they are faced with being sealed. Because you will not be able to do no buying or selling. If you don't take it. And if you don't take it. You will be cut to pieces. No, no, no. Think about it. A lot of people are going to say. I will take the seal. Because they are scared. To die. They will take it. I didn't get there yet. But I have to just go ahead of myself. Look unto God that's all I have to say because no one has more power than almighty God Amen. we sang this morning and said the Lord or oh rock in him we hide a shelter in the time of storm secure whatever ill betide he is our shelter in the time of storm. He said the raging storms. May around us beat. Guess what? We do not have to be afraid. He is our shelter. In the time of storm. We'll never leave. Or safe retreat. He's a shelter. In the time of storm. It doesn't matter what goes on. We do not have to fear or worry. Yes sometimes. Sometimes. A little thing called, oh, we are looking through the wind and see all the trees bowing down out there, the breeze and everything going through. But remember, put the word of God back to him and said, remember, as what I did the other day, I said, God, you said you are a refuge and strength. Now I am trusting in you that after this storm pass, I will be safe and secured in my home. I am putting back the word of God. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh -huh. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh -huh. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff may comfort me. It doesn't matter what, and what we have to do, we have to surrender. Uh -huh. All to Jesus, as the songwriter says. All to Jesus I surrender. Because if we do not do it, don't expect to run to him in times of tribulation, in times of trouble, and expect God is going to rescue you now. You have to turn to him. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face yes. and turn from their wicked ways. Yes. He said, then shall I hear from heaven. Yes. Forgive their sins. And heal their land. Second Chronicles 14. Or 7 verse 14 to 15. Let us look at all these scriptures. And turn to God. Especially in these times. Because as we mentioned. It is not going to get any better. Matthew we read this morning. And I, I, you can read it when you get home. Matthew 24. Read it to the end. But the disciples were asking Jesus Christ what will be the signs. Yes, and the only thing that he could tell them, yes. be careful that nobody deceive you. Yes, because false prophets were rising yes. as they are right now. Yes. Yes. 
False prophets are all over the land. Deceiving people. And it's amazing that people fall for all these foolishness. It is amazing that they allow these people to hold them into captivity. Tell them to come and knock on my door. I will have a good bucket of water for them. No one can come and tell me that there is no God. No one can come and tell me that I have to worship this or worship that. No one can do that to me and get away. And I always ask God religiously every morning when I have my devotion and evening. God, whatever you take from me. Don't take your spirit away from me yes. or my soul mind. Yes. Yes. Let me die with my soul mind. Yeah. I don't want nobody to come and deceive me uh -huh. in my old age if my life is spirit. I don't want it. I want to be in my soul mind to throw yes. nonsense the and to discern when evil doors yeah. are in my presence. Yeah. So God, Jesus Christ told him, and he says, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. Must. You understand? All these things must. must come to pass. Yeah. But the end is not yet. Yeah. Yeah. It means that there is more to come. Prepare. That means that we are to prepare yeah. for the worst. Should the Lord tarries. But we don't have to fear. Right. If you have God. It will be well. Mm -hmm. As the songwriter says. When peace like a river. Attended my way. Mm -hmm. When sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot. Thou hast taught me to say. It is well. It is well. For nation shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Are we seeing that right now? Pestilence, COVID and all these things that are going on. Earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Read the word of God. Edify yourself and get on the right path. 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound... The love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure into the end, unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations. And then shall the end come. Let us hold on to the word of God. Many false prophets. And a lot of people will be carried away. Are we seeing that now? It is very evident. They listen to all these things that catch them in their beds. They can't sleep. Thinking about what false prophets telling them. Number 21, he says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. Nor there shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. You see, oh God love his people. He shall shorten the days. And also, this mass genocide that the devil have planned for God's people, it will not last forever. Because the word of God said, God shall thunder down on him. He shall thunder down on him. And the day shall be shortened. Because of those individuals. Who kept their faith. In almighty God. For there shall arise false Christ. And false prophets. And shall show great signs. And what are we seeing that right now? In as much that. If it were possible. If it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. My God in heaven. Huh? Yes, yes. If it were possible though, serious, serious. not everyone will be deceived. Serious. And we give God thanks for that. He said, behold, I have told you before. Mm -hmm. Warning. Mm -hmm. If 
they shall say to you, here he is in the desert. He said, do not go there. Behold, he is in the secret chamber. Do not go there. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. No one will have to fool you and tell you that God, Jesus Christ, return. Or is in the, in the backyard. Or is it, you will, every eye shall behold him. It will be, it will be a startling event. Everybody will behold him. All eyes shall behold him. It shall not be a secret to anyone. So no one will have to fool you and tell you that he is there or he is not there. And it says immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Now all these are the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is what we have to read and prepare ourselves. Like the ten virgins, five were wise because they prepared, and five were foolish because they did not prepare. And it's just going to be, as the word of God says, in the days of Noah. Because the word was preached all over the world. But guess what? People did not heed the warning until the floods came. And it's the same thing that is going on today. The warning, the word of God has been preached. And they come and they don't listen or they hear. And guess what? It goes through the other ear. But the time is going to come when it shall happen. Yeah. Yeah. The rapture yeah. will come. Yeah. And Jesus Christ will swiftly yes. take away those who have prepared themselves. And then those who are left behind shall encounter the great tribulation. Titus 2.11-15 for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all, all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present, in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people. Zealous for good works. Speak in these things. Exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. We have to live lives now that please God. We have to love everyone. We have to help. We have to have respect for Almighty God. We have to love God with all our hearts and our souls and our minds. Purity. Holy lives. And the big one, we in order to do all these things, we have to be separated from the world. We cannot be a part of the world and also a part of the body of Christ. It does not work that way. And let me tell you what it is. I will do anything now to be on the right path when Jesus Christ returns. Whatever he's asking me to do through his word. God help me every day to live according to your word. Because what is expected to come, I don't want to be a part of it. I do not want to be a part of it. Second Thessalonians 2. 1 to 17 read and just write down these scriptures and when you go home you can read them but what it's talking about is this part I grab out of it and it says here the man of sin is uh, let no one deceive you by any means for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. Or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of... Do we see these things happening right now? 
There are people in other nations and in other countries presenting themselves as God and want people to worship them. It's happening right now. Showing himself that he's God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know that what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. The Holy Spirit of God restraining the evil one. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who has, only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way and then the lawless one will be revealed. Take note of the way as we spoke before. In the rapture, the Holy Spirit of God will be leaving whom the Lord will consume whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So th th this, th this lawless man, this man of sin has but a short time. He has but a short time. He has but a short time. Because God will consume him with the breath of his mouth. Hallelujah. Satan can call down fire from heaven. Yeah. And it cannot consume the whole earth. But God can bring down fire from heaven. And consume the entire universe. Yes, Lord. Including principalities and powers. Yes, Lord. Yeah. The present restrainer. Who is the Holy Spirit. Restraining the man of sin. Is the Holy Spirit of God. God has restrained sin in the world through the power of his Holy Spirit. And the church with lust cannot exist without the Spirit's presence, as we mentioned before. Thus, the removal of the church through the rapture will be in effect the removal of all restraints on the power of sin in this world. Can you imagine? All the restraint that was restraining the man of sin, the evil in this world, will be let loose. Do you want to be here? I don't want to be here at that time. First John 2 18. Little children. A lot of advice in the word of God to us. I love that. Little children, it is it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. The coming of the Lord is at hand. Is at hand. And it's time for us to get our homes in order. Or earthly home. Get it in order. It can be any time now. With all that is going on right now, I cannot be comfortable in my home. I'm looking out. The other day, I was lying in my bed and I heard like a knocking on the door. And I was quick to get up and look. But I said, God, he wouldn't knock if he coming in. He would just come right in and get me. He wouldn't be knocking. He would just come straight in. like a lamb and spoke like a dragon you see these are the scriptures that people need to hear people don't want to hear about prosperity who don't need prosperity riches have wings and fly back to heaven as called what proverbs say what are you covering yourself about riches and all this business think about god think about these preach about these things that will happen to us if we're not prepared to meet jesus when he comes and he exercises all authority 
iniquity of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. All those who dwell in the earth, the ones who are left behind. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on earth by those signs which he was granted, which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship him to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And we know the number of his name was 666. No, 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 no. All these are, sin, are, are the tribulation, the great tribulation. These are all the things that will happen after the rapture. After Jesus Christ comes and takes his church out of the way. And the Holy Spirit has removed itself from the earth. Because the earth now is like the devil takes full possession of the earth. These are things to come. So it was, we should not be worrying on talking on sort of things. Let us look up to God. Amen. Let us do the things that please God. Yeah. Let us live a good life, a righteous life. So that if we should die, we would be safe and secure. We live forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. But have everlasting life with God Almighty. And all these signs that will be working here, they are counterfeit because all these are false prophets working under the auspices of the devil in hell. Following what God, if you should look at Revelation 7, and you all can read it when you get home, Revelation 7, 2 to 3, and see where God sealed his people. And Satan is doing the same thing. He's a copycat. But the one thing we know is that God is bigger than him. God is more powerful than him. And one of these days, we all shall see it. We all shall see it when God himself shall send an angel up above and chain him. And lay him low into the bottomless pit. My God in heaven. And he shall be let loose for a little while. It shows that God has total control over the devil in hell. And God will do, a, just abandon him, burn him to pieces. So why should people do the things that please the devil? Make the devil happy. Do things that please God. Because everlasting life is promised to all those. Who put their trust in God. And who serve him daily. Not just today. Every day of your life. Until he comes to receive us unto himself. Which can be at any time now. We give God thanks and praise for his word. Heavenly Father, God Almighty. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Oh God. We thank you Lord for your word. And we thank you Lord for the impact. Lord, that your word, my God, have on our lives, Father God. We pray, Lord God, that we will continue, Father, to lift up our eyes onto the hills, my God. Because we know, as we have read in your word, God Almighty, that a time is coming when Jesus Christ shall return, Almighty God, and to receive his church. And that there's a second coming, my Father God, when he shall come and to judge the world, my God, of all the sins. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, we pray that...
that you will keep your children bound, my God, to your chest. Even now, Lord God, keep us bound, Lord, in your word, God Almighty, that we'll know and to draw closer to you, to build a relationship with you, my God. Because nothing, nothing good is promising in this world, my God, which shall be destroyed, my God Almighty, in the days ahead. My God, we want to thank you for your children who came out today to hear your word. We pray, God, that they will go away full today. My God, and that they will continue, my God, to feast upon your word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray, Lord, that you continue to hold them in the palm of your hands, Lord God. For those who are struggling in their faith, mighty God, we pray that you'll reach down to them even now, Lord, and to lift them up in the name of Jesus Christ as the days are drawing near. Perilous times, Lord God, we are in. My God, we have no place else to turn but to you, God. And we pray today, Father, that you will reach down as you reach down for the children of Israel, my God, and to save us from the wrath that is yet to come. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you have preserved our lives. We do not take it for granted. And we thank you for all of us who are here today, Father, that you have preserved our lives from all the tempests, Lord God, from all the natural disasters. My Father, you have kept us. We pray, God, that we'll never lose sight of you and not to lose sight of the coming of Jesus Christ, that it can be at any time now. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will stand with us in the name of Jesus. Go before us, O Lord, and make all the crooked pathways straight. Hallelujah. We pray, God, that you will expose all the landmines, God Almighty, and all the secret traps that are set for us, Lord, by the devil in hell who have come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. We pray, mighty God, almighty God, that you'll be behind us from a hedge of protection, a fiery hedge of protection behind us, Lord, so that you will be able, my Father, to destroy all the fiery darts of the devil. We pray, God, that you will stand with us and keep us firmly rooted and grounded in you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, cause your grace, Lord, to be sufficient for us and your strength to be made perfect in our weaknesses. And be above us, Lord, to refresh us with your divine Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, again, we pray for all your people who have been affected by this hurricane. We pray, God, that you will revive them again, oh God, and that you will rebuild, my God. Rebuild them from ground zero. You can rebuild them, almighty God, and cause them, Father, to turn to you in a time as this. Cause them to recognize, Lord, that you are their only refuge and ever-present help in times of trouble. So we pray, Father, that they will not just take all these disasters that are going on around us. Cause them not to just look at them and to try to get out, to get food and to get by each day. But cause them, oh God, to look at them as signs, my God Almighty, signs of the times that the coming of Jesus Christ is near. Grant us your divine peace, Lord. And grant that today and always, my Father, our oh Father, our Father who art in heaven. Hallelujah. Grant us your divine peace, Lord. And grant that today and always, as you bless us, cause us to continue, Lord, to be a blessing in the life of others. As we ask these in no other name, but in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. May the good Lord bless you all and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the good Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you all his peace, both now and forevermore. And God's children will all agree and say, Amen and Amen and Amen.